Thank you very much. Um, I'm actually extremely excited to be here uh, in Brussels and talking to you. So thank you for Shoko, full circle for inviting me. Um, yes, I am Daria. Uh, I am from Amsterdam and I am a pianist. And I will talk to you about projects that I'm doing um, with the composers Handel and Mozart. And I invite you to ask any questions if you want. Uh, probably we have that afterwards. But if there's something you really want to know, please do um, say, then, uh, then we get the conversation going. Um, but I'll start with what happened four years ago or five years ago, because it changed my life as a musician um, pretty deeply. Um, I, uh, I was in Amsterdam and I actually had the flu and I was, I was at home and uh, uh, browsing on the internet as you do. Um, and I was looking for, for some music and suddenly I found out that George Frederick Handel, a composer I love dearly, also had written music for the harpsichord. And I didn't know that. And I thought I knew my repertoire more or less. And uh, this I didn't know. So I downloaded the sheet music, I put it on my piano stand and I started playing. And what happened next was that I fell completely and utterly in love with the music. But I also had never heard it before. I never heard it on a CD. I never heard it live. So it was just me and the score. And it kind of opened up all the windows I had in my head probably for a couple of years already and didn't know about. And um, there were two things that I thought immediately. I want to reach as many people as possible with this music and uh, my own artistic project, I want to record it on a CD. And before I go on, I should play a little bit of Handel so that you know that what, what I'm talking about actually. So this is an Allemande from the uh, Suite in D minor.
This is one of many, many short uh, pieces by Handel, all compiled to suites. And um, this is one of those more melancholic, uh, uh, short, uh, slow dances, but they're also extremely energetic, energetic places like... <laughs> It just goes on, just very, very, very energetic, and it all all goes uh, quickly from one into the other. And that contrast, that what really was what gripped me right away. Um, as I said, I wanted to record a CD with this music, and I wanted to reach as many po people as possible. Um, but if I would go to my manager um, and tell him that I'd like to play Handel, my manager would have to go to the hall and uh, the manager or the, the, the programmer of the hall would think about it and he would look at all the other competition of pianists and then maybe he would book me for a concert and if he would book me for a concert, the brochure already has to be done a year before um, you play. So in the end, you know more or less one and a half years before what you're going to play. Um, but I was in a hurry this time. I really wanted to play this uh, as quick as possible. So I took every opportunity. And the first opportunity arose in Amsterdam, uh, where I could play on a piano towed by a car through the streets of Amsterdam. Uh, it was a sunny summer day, and um, I sat down and also I thought, okay, I am a child of my time. I love YouTube, I love Facebook, I look every day for movies. So if I want to reach as many people as possible, I will put this on YouTube, I will make a movie. So I talked to a couple of um, movie uh, cameramen actually, and um, the cameraman, uh, and just to sort of feel if they loved the music I was playing and if they, if they wanted to do this with me. And there was one cameraman who said, yes, I'll do this with you. So we went um, and played. And uh, it is on YouTube, so you can look it up. It's called Handel Hits the Road. And uh, I have to say that although I love the magic on a stage um, and the... Uh, um, the, the kind of focus I can have there, this was a magical afternoon because uh, I wasn't just playing and the, the, the music was resonating through the, the, the streets and the, and, and the windows in, in the small streets of Amsterdam, but also people were really listening and coming or even coming up to me. And while I was playing, somebody would ask, is this Bach? And I said, no, no, this is Handel. And, uh, and, and children would come and look in the piano. And um, of course, this is all not benefiting for your concentration, but there was some other kind of warmth that was uh, pretty amazing, actually, to, to feel. And um, so I made that movie and I put it online and I used it to crowdfund money together to make that CD because four years ago it was just the moment in Holland that crowdfunding was starting in the arts and I was the first uh, classical musician to do that. And um, actually that was uh, the reason that I got a huge amount of media attention for what I was doing. So that was a great situation for me because again, more people listening to Handel because I got into the financial times where a musician would never end up, but I somehow had an article about crowdfunding and, um, and some interviews. So that was all great. Um, so I was a week before going uh, uh, in the studios in Hanover in Germany where I was going to record the CD. I, I had crowdfunded the money together um, and I, with the cameraman I thought about okay what can we do next because it's winter now but I really want to I want to try to see if I can still reach more people. It's too cold to play outside. What can we do? Um, and I'd like to show you in a movie. Um, it's called Handel at Home. Actually um, the only time that, oh, it was the end of the, thanks. <laughs> um, the, the only time that people are that close to me is uh, when I am teaching or I'm being taught. It's, you know, you sit at the piano and you show people what, what the music is about. And I'm saying this because it has to do with my next project that I will come to in a couple of minutes. But here I experienced something uh, that, that planted a seed for my Mozart project later on. Um, anyway, I made this movie. Uh, actually, you see there my fitness instructor. I got him to go and <laughs> there's the cheese seller from the street. And so I also really, 
I called up, it's not, I only didn't ask people on the street, I also called up people who I know never go to concerts and, I, and they all came, which was great. Um, so I put this online and I went to the studio and I recorded um, Handel, and not having a label yet. Uh, I was going to shop and see who wanted to, to uh, um, um, release this CD. Um, but before that, because the movies probably did their work or what, whatever, what, what all uh, other reasons, but uh, I already got a phone call from Sony Classical and they um, invited me to Berlin and I talked to them in Berlin and, um, and then I thought I'm going to really negotiate for a good deal after that I realized I'm just one person and they did uh, lots of deals um, but it was it was fine we got a deal <laughs> and uh, it released it but one day after I went to Berlin to talk to them about that I already told them I'm actually going to Brazil tomorrow and I'm not sure what's going to happen um, because I was going to Brazil to Sao Paulo to play a concert in a normal ho hall and uh, the director of that of that festival um, had seen these two movies uh, no, just this, and the Handel hits the road. And he said, Daria, are you afraid of heights? And I said, well, I'm, I'm not sure, um, but I was completely on this flow of enthusiasm and trying out things. And I thought, okay, you know, I'm gonna go. I'm even gonna make sure that there are a couple of students filming. And if this doesn't work, if this is going to be really awful, um, it will be just between me and 10,000 people on a square in Sao Paulo. And if it is going to work, it's going to go, um, it's going to be a movie. And I'd like to show you that movie, a part of that movie. It, it goes on for a bit, but the building you saw the last was the opera building. And in Sao Paulo, it's $400 per ticket to go to the opera building. So the guy who, found, who made this piano on the crane, I cannot even... Um, sort of show you how the construction worked, but um, he was an activist who wanted to really bring music to the people. So it was, a, it was a statement for them and it was a statement for me too, because I thought I'm going to bring Handel as far as I can. This was recorded for a super, uh, super famous uh, uh, program called Fantastico on Sunday evenings on public network of Brazil. So uh, I don't know how many million Brazilians who heard a bit of Handel. So I thought, yes, mission accomplished. Um, and so it's, it's, it was actually kind of the, 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 the triptych of my movies kind of I had finished. I liked the number three, so I made three movies and the CD was released. It became one of the uh, most um, successful in Holland and it was also released internationally. Uh, I got invited to a couple of uh, TV shows and um, m many things have happened after after that and I, I was able to play handle uh, in lots of places uh, in firms in universities everywhere where people usually don't come to me in the concert hall and um, I already started thinking what can I you know I already had I had a room in my head for a new project and if you listen to this um,
piece goes on, but I only have 45 minutes, so I'm, I have to go on with my story. But can you imagine, my, my, my question is, can you imagine this music with 10,000 people around you, with lots of cameras, and with lots of noise, and uh, you know, outside, amplified? I can't, actually. This is Mozart, uh, this is a fantasy, and there's not, not everything you can do as outspoken and as extrovert as I did in those years um, with Handel. I, I realized very, very deeply that there's maybe even a connection uh, between the musician and the music that goes a bit deeper than, than just interpretation, the way I play it. It is how you want to convey that composer. Handel was, is very extrovert and very transparent. I felt I could do it outside and I didn't feel, you know, I, I thought it enhanced actually even the, 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 the character of the music. This music by Mozart, music that I really wanted to study for a while um, after Handel, I couldn't see myself doing like that. Um, so I thought, what is it? What, what is, you know, what is, what is, what is music? What, what is in my head? What do I want to tell you as an audience? Um, after Handel, you know, what is going to be my, my new project? What is Mozart telling us? And I took a year to really think about that. And thinking about Handel at home, where I had people that close to me, I realized that I was going to um, also remember what, what it was like, how I learned to play Mozart. Mozart has never been my one and only composer. I was, when I was little, I loved Beethoven, I loved Tchaikovsky, and somehow, for me, Mozart's themes, very, and this is very personal, were, were sometimes a bit slippery. I couldn't, I couldn't grab them. So when my, I had lessons with my teacher when I was 10 on a Mozart sonata, she, she taught me how to, how to feel and how to play this. And, I took a year to think about this and I asked some artists around me in Holland if they wanted to explore uh, this with me. And together we made up a movie that I'm going to show you in a bit. Um, and that movie uses metaphors to explain what Mozart is. I thought we're going to go in depth in Mozart and this is about what elegance in Mozart is. And I thought, okay, there's, there are other aspects in Mozart that are very interesting, like playfulness. Playfulness is all around us. Um, and depth and, and layeredness, it's all around us. It's, it's, these are universal things that you can hear in Mozart music and that are all around us. So I'm now going to uh, start, actually. I made this movie. I made a CD. Uh, it also has become a success. I'm very happy with that. And now I'm actually on the verge of starting a platform that I... I will take a couple of years to make where you can le learn everything about Mozart and listen to Mozart without having to read about it or without just musicians explaining Mozart in the most, uh, in the most il illustrative way, if, if, if I may say so. And, and, and this is my plan for the next years um, that I, I really want to try to make that platform happen and not just by me playing outside, but by getting people uh, kind of uh, inside in, in, in my head. I already tried it out. The movie you're about to see, I tried it out in a school, uh, a music school. And uh, I actually had a couple of students saying, I don't like Mozart uh, from the start. And I always have difficulty because, you know, I somewhere understand it, uh, but somewhere I, I do not because Mozart is our quintessential, is the, is the greatest of them all. But I, I, so I understood them and they, they, they uh, I did a session with them on Mozart and after that they turned around and I really was happy with that. So, but without um, further ado, I'd like to show you um, that movie about Mozart and elegance. <laughs> 